Hi everyone. Due to COVID-19, we have to change the way to teach and to learn the subject legal reasoning and legal methodology. Last time, we stopped at part three, skills required for legal reasoning study. Now I would like to continue this one. So previously, you already discussed about the differences between skills and knowledge and also discussed and defined groups of skills essential for legal reasoning study including critical thinking skills, general and specific language skills, intellectual and technical skills, and argument instructions. Now I'm going into details in terms of each of these skills. Critical thinking skills. So this is one of very essential skills for lawyers. Thinking of lawyers, people believe that they are best at critical thinking. Now thinking, what is it? Thinking is a kind of mental activity that helps to formulate or to solve a problem to make decision, fulfill a desire to understand. Critical thinking is a kind of thinking, but it is a high grade activity of thinking and not everyone has these critical thinking skills. It needs to be developed. Sometimes critical thinking is also viewed as an attitude that deployed logically and selectively to evaluate arguments. What critical thinking uh, benefits, what ability it gives you when you have critical thinking skills. So the, the ability to be curious, the ability to be flexible, and the ability to be skeptical. These are benefits of critical thinking skills. First of all, because you're critical about something, so it means that you want to know about it in depth. You want to know about it from different views, different angles and approaches. Therefore, critical thinking helps you to be interested in learning. Secondly, because you know that everything can be viewed from different angles and if the situation the situation change the facts change things may be changed therefore you are being able to be flexible to adapt easily to different situations lastly critical thinking skills help you to be skeptical you have to dis differentiate between skeptical and pessimistic. Pessimistic people are those who do not believe in anything good. But skeptical is not that. Skeptical is ability to question about something, whether they are true, whether they are useful, whether they are meaningful, and why. Are there any proofs to prove about them? So these are benefits of critical thinking skills. Now, in legal field, critical thinking helps you to develop or to exercise your judgments based on the following careful things. Careful observations, careful investigation, and careful considerations of the issues relevant to the matter to which a judgment is to be made. You might already know that critical thinking skills include reasoning logically and the ability to locate underlying assumption. For example, searching for hidden assumptions or the behind the covert assumptions and also help you to justify your own assumptions 
whether your assumptions are logical or reasonable. And also, you can uh, judge the rationality of different assumptions and testing the accuracy of those assumptions. Finally, critical thinking skills include also analytic and argument skills. Now, I turn to the second group of skills, which are very, very essential to lawyers. In the legal field, you see all of the norms, the standards, the legal rules are expressed in the form of language. Why the doctors help to kill the disease of their clients with medicine tablets, with vaccine and other things, we help to help the problems of our clients by using language. We provide them with our legal advices, which are expressed in the form of language. Therefore, we need to have a very good language skills. Those who are poor at language hardly be successful in this legal field. So language skills include various things. For example, grammar, spelling, vocabulary, punctuation, appreciations of the influence, and in also how to use and explore the power of language. But did you know the differences between general language and special language? In our profession, law, so we need to have not only general language skills, but we need also have good special language. Excuse me. It means that we have to know terms and terminology specialized in the law area. So the third group of skills are also uh, important to study legal reasoning or to be a good lawyer include intellectual and technical skills. For example, those skills include how to locate primary and secondary sources of information of materials, how to read texts of the law and the text about law, or how to write good summary, good notes, good references. All of these are under the name is that intellectual and technical skills. And I just focus on to the first point, primary and secondary sources of information. These are very important in the work as a lawyer because we need to know which sources of information are primary and which one are secondary and the values the ways of those kind of information. Primary source of information, what is it? It is um, information created at the time when the event occurred, including direct evidences or original sources of information created at the time of the event occurred Sometimes primary source include also information which was recorded soon after the event occurred. For example, the direct evidence at the time of the event occurred. I can give you an example. For example, the board of directors meeting, BOD meetings. And in this meeting, there will there is a secretary who types all of the, or record all of the words said by the directors and their discussions. So this is kind of primary source. Information which was recorded soon after the event occurred. For example, there was a car accident, car accident. And then the policemen come and they made the 
investigations of the scene, the crime scenes, and they recorded the net minutes. So this is also the primary source. Primary source of first-hand accounts of events. There also may be data collected for scientific studies, data collected for scientific studies, and also some historical documents, also kind of primary source. Here, for example, the book, Long Walk to Freedom, the autobiography of Nelson Mandela. He wrote about his first-hand experience. It's, this is a kind of in information created after the event, but by the author himself his reflections of his experience. So this is a kind of primary source. What about secondary source? Secondary source in general meaning, they are sources of information which are derived from the primary source. Maybe the commentary about the primary sources, the interpretations about the primary sources and it is written about primary sources, analyze, interpret, discuss information available from the primary source. In legal profession, the secondary source of information provide summaries and interpretations about the lack, the law, and facts. facts. So now, the question is, why should we use primary source? What are the benefits of primary source? Can you give me some answers? Now, I would like to summarize some benefits of using primary source. The primary source helps to explain how major events are related to each other in time, in the time that the event happens. It also helps to think critically. And because of the primary source normally recorded the facts, so it helps us to distinguish between facts and opinions, the views of people about the facts. It helps us to distinguish between facts and opinions. Lastly, Primary source help us to develop our own conclusions and it help us to analyze how historical events affect relevant parties. Now we turn on to the questions. Why should we use secondary sources? What are benefits of secondary sources? Do you have any answers? Let's discuss with your friends. Now, I would like to show some of the benefits of this source of information. It helps us to get the expert opinions in order to evaluate what really happened. For example, COVID-19 actually happened as this disease are spread through many countries around the world, but there are various expert opinions available, right? So these are kind of uh, opinions, experts about this disease. The second benefit of secondary source is that it help us to gain insight. How? Because it help us to examine different perspectives about the same event. And from those standing points, we can form our own opinions. And especially in the legal profession, when you are a junior lawyer, you need a lot of expert opinions to understand how the rules, the norms, are applicable into particular situations, particular circumstances or facts. 
Lastly, second resources also help to save time by reading information collected from a number of different sources. For example, you read one of the paper viewing different opinions and points of different authors. So you can uh, right away collect various um, different sources of information. Here are some examples of second resources or information, for example, books and articles that review other source. So now I would like to summarize the differences between primary source and secondary source. Primary source are created at the time of an event or very soon after. Created by someone who saw or heard an event themselves. Second resource created after the event happened, sometimes a long time after something happened, it expresses an opinion or argument about a past event and it often uses primary source as examples. In order to define whether the source we receive is primary or secondary, you have to check the context and also you need to know the purpose of your use of the source of information and the purpose of the information when it is created and given to you. Regarding the strengths and weaknesses of these kinds of information, so primary sources information have the strengths of high accuracy, but it weakness its time consuming in order to create and also hard to find. Secondary sources of information, it has strengths like this ease of access, low cost to acquire, clarifications of research questions, and may answer your own research questions. But it has also certain weaknesses. For example, the second source of information depends on the quality of the research. Therefore, when you use the secondary sources, you have to evaluate the quality, whether they are good to use or not. And sometimes secondary sources are not specific to your needs, to your questions. And maybe it is incomplete information and because it is created after the event, therefore sometimes they are not timely. So when you're reading the sources of information, you have to ask several questions. This is five W, right? Who, what, when, where, and why? Who wrote this? What does it say? When was it written? Where was it written? And why was it written? Summing up. Now, it is very important to determine the type of information you are looking at or you are given or you are using, right? Whether they are primary, original, or whether they are secondary. If they are secondary, they summarize, analyze, or critique primary source. Both are good but you need to critically evaluate them when using them, okay? So in legal research, primary source are normally law. The law must be primary source. But not only law are primary source in the legal research because sometimes in the legal field work because you see some of the minutes, some of the contracts, and also the record of 
criminal sense, as blood kind of primary source, but the law actually must be the primary source. Secondary source are the order written by lawyers, judges, or legal professionals which commends the law, categorize the law, or interpret the law. And primary source in the law, in the legal professions, are um, ne either mandatory, means binding, or persuasive. Right? And the secondary sources are only uh, persuasive. So now we, I come to the last. A group of skills as argument constructions. You see in Vietnamese language go call lawyers a thai guy. It means professors of arguments and master of arguments. So lawyers need to have the argument construction skills including how to build up a good and efficient argument constructions and also Argument construction skills including your capacity of evaluating the values, the, reason, the reasoning, the logics within the argument and how to interpret them. And sometimes it also requires the ability to deconstruct uh, the other's arguments in order to find out the weakness in the other's arguments or even yourself. Right. So these four groups of skills are very essential to legal reasoning study to lawyers. That is the part of the first paragraph of our chapter. We already talked about definitions of legal reasoning study, the purpose of legal reasoning studies, the skills needed for legal reasoning studies, all of those three points are under the first part, the study of legal reasoning. And the next time, I will turn on to the art of legal reasoning. <laughs>